Hello, this is Dr. Fitzgerald. This is a multi-part video in which I will make a few observations about your essay assignment on global climate change. In the YouTube video I've asked you to watch, Greg Craven, also known as Wandering Mind 42, presents a novel approach to global climate change. He attempts to move beyond the often angry debate about whether global warming is really happening. He presents an interesting and complex argument that I've asked you to reconstruct and critique. In what follows, I'll indicate one approach to reconstructing the argument, one which focuses on the propositional logic that we've been studying in chapters 11 and 12. It's important to note that it's not the only possible approach to reconstructing the argument. You may wish to pursue an alternative reconstructive strategy. Let's start by noting a few things that Craven mentions in what might be called the prologue or beginning of his argument. He says that the debate on global climate change has reached an impasse with partisans on both sides of the debate armed with evidence that supports their position. Unfortunately, we'll never be able to decide who's right at any given moment because we can't know what will happen in the future. He then makes the very interesting claim that he's found an argument that renders moot the entire question of whether global climate change is happening at all. I'll go through the argument quickly since you've heard it many times by now. Premise one, if we act and global, clim isn't really, global climate change isn't really happening, then we have a global depression. Premise two, if we don't act and global climate change isn't really happening, then we don't have a global depression, and that's the best case scenario. Premise three, if we act and global climate change isn't really happening, then we have global depression, but we prevent other terrible consequences. Premise four, if we don't act and global climate change is really happening, then we have a global depression and we suffer other terrible consequences, and that's the worst case scenario. Premise number five, which is I, I believe is unstated, the worst case scenario poses intolerable risk. Premise six, we can eliminate the risk by choosing column A and conclusion, therefore, we must choose column A. Let's try to make some sense of the propositional uh, logic of Craven's argument, and in particular, the assumptions that are at work in the grid he constructs in the video. First, he says that we must concede that either global climate change is happening or it isn't. This is a disjunctive statement in which we have two disjuncts that are contradictory. If one is true, the other is necessarily false. Second, we either will act to prevent global climate change or we won't act. Again, we can express this proposition as a disjunction of two contradictory statements. Third, we can note something that Craven doesn't that we are obviously using the exclusive sense of disjunction at this stage of the argument, not inclusive. And as we noted, that means that if one disjunct is true, the other is necessarily false. Now let's symbolize the disjunctions as we've learned to do in chapter 11. Let GCC stand for global climate change is occurring. Let A stand for we take action to avert global climate change. Once we symbolize the propositions, they look like this. The statement, either global climate change is happening or it isn't, we can symbolize as GCC wedge tilde GCC. The second proposition, namely, we do act to prevent GCC or we don't act to prevent it, can be symbolized as A wedge tilde A. It's interesting to note that there is an implied deductive argument here if we negate one of the disjuncts. It's called disjunctive syllogism, and it yields the affirmation of the other disjunct. The logical conditions for the scenarios in the argument can be arrayed in a grid that forms a matrix consisting of two rows and two columns. The rows, which run horizontally, represent the possibility that global climate change either is or is not happening. The columns, which run vertically, represent the possibility that we take action or we don't. So each cell will yield a conjunction that brings together a row and a column. In the first cell, we get the possibility that we took action, but that no global climate change was occurring. In the second cell, we get the possibility that we did not take action and that no global climate change was occurring. In the third cell, we get the possibility that we took action and that global climate change was real. And in the last cell, we have the possibility that we took no action, although global climate change was real. This concludes part one of this multi-part video on the global climate change argument. Please proceed to part two.